guys, Eric and Kim here. We are going to talk about Moon Knight Episode 3, The Friendly Type. Uh, a couple apologies, though. Uh, we're not doing this one live, so we're not going to do the chat. I know it's going up a couple hours later than normal. There's just there's scheduling stuff. You know, life is crazy. <laughs> so uh, just uh, we had to do it that way this week. So sorry about that. Uh, Kim, are you ready to talk about The Friendly Type? I think so. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go into full spoilers here. Uh, that's again Moon Knight episode three. So if you haven't seen it, you have been warned about spoilers. Three, two, one, spoiler zone. Uh, this episode directed by uh, Mohammed Diab, uh, returning from the first episode. He directs the, the brunt of Moon Knight, is going to be him. Uh, and the writers, uh, Bo DeMaio, uh, Peter Cameron, and uh, Sabir Perzada, um, who, when I'm looking at their credits, like Bo DeMaio wrote for, um, is going to be the head writer on X Men 97. And Peter Cameron wrote a couple of WandaVisions. And Sabir Prasada is writing for Miss Marvel. So you definitely have people that are in that uh, Marvel Studios zone. Uh, what did you think, Kim, of uh, this third episode here? Well, I thought it was another really good looking and uh, intriguing episode. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, this transfers the action from London to Cairo. So if you were getting bored of the London uh, sets, then... Uh, We've got some sand now, so that's cool. And and bustling markets. Um, and I liked, you know, that that you had that kind of contrast here between those busy streets, or the busy market, and the 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 uh, I was going to say the Great Pyramid of Giza and the gods in there, and the kind of um, relative uh, structure and and uh, quiet within the pyramid. Uh, but I, but it was busy in another way, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but there was excitement uh, and intrigue, and we got the biggest hint yet, and I've talked about this uh, in the last couple of episodes we've done, of uh, at least one more personality within Mark, and that is a really enticing, a, a violent one. Yeah. Um, and But also the fact that, that, uh, that Layla might be keeping secrets too, and uh, talked about her a little bit in the past as well. So there was some imaginative action set pieces too, and again, like this rich attention to detail that that uh, I just love in this series. Yeah, uh, you know, I really like this episode, and it's funny because uh, I don't know about you, Kim, but uh, for me, because we, you know, we got the the first four early, so I watched them pretty much in a row, and then you kind of have to parse out as they're airing, like break them back up into what, what happened where. And I was like, oh, this this third one is a very busy episode. Like when I had, a, when I remembered how much happened in this third episode, uh, how many like, you know, that, oh, this is the one where they're running around Cairo and they go inside and we meet all the gods uh, yeah. and, you know, Anton's in it and they go out and they make the sky move. Uh, there was uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of things happening here. I thought in a fun way, like this, uh, you know, it's impossible you're not to uh, think on some level of Indiana Jones as far as like, this was our first look at who Mark Spector is kind of a uh, day to day, because yeah. in the other episodes, I mean, he's only in the first a little, the second one, he's kind of talking to Stephen Moore, but he he's in control for most of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get to see that, guess what? He's a charming Oscar Isaac, you know, uh, <laughs> action adventure guy, you know, and I thought that was a uh, Really cool to see, like, his reactions to uh, the guy, uh, the theatricality of the guy throwing the knife in the air and catching it. Yes. And just, like, you know, the fact that he's he's given, he's doing this sort of that, like, great uh, Harrison Ford-esque, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I've seen, I, I've seen a lot. And, uh, you know, let's let's do this and slap in the teenage guy. He doesn't want to hurt too bad. Yeah, so and that, what, was, what was that quick? We're going to dance or fight? That was very Harrison Ford, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I also liked when he... Uh, I think it's the same dude who throws the knife in the air and catches it that he licks the knife and Mark just punches yes. him. Uh, that was, uh... was that directly taken from that home video of Oscar Isaac? Do you see that where he was a, when he was a kid? Um, the Avenger, I, right? Yes, that's it. I'm pretty sure he licks the knife there. And I wondered if they took that from there. But... You're right, Kim. Yeah, when he hosted SNL and he showed that clip of the like the, the movie him and his like brother made, I think, when they were kids or him and a friend. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, it was a, an Oscar Isaac intro there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I thought that was really fun. And they also had the dynamic with Kanchu Again, because this is more what the, we're getting a glimpse here of what, like, the adventures before this show were uh, mm -hmm. here. Um, even with Leia's backstory, and we kind of find out that she, you know, has a little bit of a Robin Hood thing going 
steals, gives it back to where it should be, keeps a little for herself. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And then like the fact that Kanchu, uh, just such a fun personality there, the, the, when he said, I thought he'd talk, you know, when the, when he like has him hold that, the, the teenager over the uh, thing, the guy, that's yeah. like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought that was great. But let me ask you, what did you think? Uh, Cause I thought I saw some people a little split on this part. Uh, mm. the, the, the gathering of the gods as it were, when uh, all the, uh, the human avatars uh, we see kind of get together for a, a little bit of quorum there. Yeah, well, there was some missing. I noticed that. I don't know where they were, but um, uh, you know that that I don't what I don't know what the opinions were um, that, you, that you've seen. But I liked that bit. That, the, the part I liked about that, amongst other things, though, was um, uh, the, was the, all the lines. Lines were a thing that stuck out to me in this episode in the background and the like Dutch angles, which is a thing where the camera's tilted and it makes the lines go off off camera in funny angles um and uh, to to create this idea of um confusion i suppose but psychological that stevens or mark's psychological disorder um uh and there was lots of lines within the within the pyramid which is probably not what you expected me to say when you asked <laughs> me what i thought of this sequence <laughs> no no that's good though um yeah, you know, uh, I think, you know, there's, there's, it's always, it's, you know, it's a tricky sequence because of course there's going to be something innately, a kind of like a funny little silly vibe to the fact that it's like, these people are all uh, the avatars for gods. Uh, there was one line that I thought was kind of a grown worthy, but I couldn't tell if it was purposefully or not, which is just hearing uh, an Egyptian god in a human body say, this is a safe place to say if you feel exploited <laughs> by Khonshu. Uh, but one part I knew was supposed to be funny and I definitely appreciated was Oscar Isaac's performance again uh, mm -hmm. praising him because in this scene he is playing Conchu yes. and the way he puts his head back and bellows those lines mm -hmm. of um, a sort of you know because we get the idea that Conchu is kind of a little bit of like a petulant a bratty god yeah uh, and I thought that was very funny what Oscar Isaac yeah. did it was and then this whole thing I mean this this stood out to me and I don't know if it was deliberate or just a uh, uh, a kind of a um an issue but you know when they when they went into to what the plan was was to kind of get uh harrow punished by the gods um he said we need this we need our uh case to be he didn't say watertight but uh but it was worse to that effect and they right. went in without having strategized without having a plan and and they were completely kind of speechless uh after after um i say they i mean mark and Konshu, but yeah. um yeah but uh after harrow gave his kind of manipulative uh talk to the gods and of course they were like yeah this this uh Konshu is awful mark is sick and he's being taken advantage of and therefore um you know we are we are not listening to you but it was it was hilarious that they didn't go in with a plan really <laughs> they would not hold up well as lawyers <laughs> though no. you, yeah the the egyptian gods you know feel uh, a little bit like saps here because they are just fallen hook line and sinker for what harrow is uh is feeding them but you are correct kim uh they need to prepare their case they need to <laughs> Like, right let's get this eclipse going and let's get in there but having not planned anything <laughs> right right uh yes i get I, that's, I guess what i'm saying about that sequence is yeah there's something a little silly about it but i think it sells it because there is definitely a lot of intentional humor uh yeah. peppered throughout uh that, that certainly helps you with that um yeah. now and we uh, learned, sorry i do want yeah. to say we we learned that um conchu seemed to have had a romantic dalliance with one of the gods <laughs> that's right yeah there's uh some some hot goss about <laughs> the gods going on there. love and music <laughs> yes yes um and so then yeah again and then uh, an episode that you know even if they're not traveling like uh, uh literally across the world like there's a lot of different locations in this episode yeah. uh, uh because then we get the uh the journey to uh, anton uh, first of all, you know, we should uh, note the sadness that uh, Gaspar uh, Ole Leal, I hope I'm saying his last name right, uh, you know, unfortunately passed away earlier this year. Um, and so, uh, you know, he's giving, I don't know if this was his final performance, one of his final performances, Anton, who 
in the comics is the costumed villain Midnight Man. Um, but here is sort of, uh, I think, a great, you know, uh, a, a certain type of character you get in these kind of adventures. Like, you know, the, the, uh, the, the guy you have to deal with, you don't really want to deal with. Uh, again, kind of gives a, a fun little bit of history here with like Layla and the idea of these adventures that, you know, she's had in the past uh, here. Did you catch Kim? Uh, because this show has been so on its own in the MCU, uh, there is a quick mention of Madripoor here. I did catch it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, uh, Anton says, after Madripoor, I'm sure you two have a lot uh, to talk about. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm sure, I, I have a feeling I've missed maybe other things of that ilk, like these tiny mm -hmm. little things, but it had more of a spotlight than it might normally because, uh, yeah, they're not doing uh, shield. Get in shield. That's <laughs> 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 tough here. Yeah. Um, what would you think of the, uh, the the back and forth with Anton here? Uh, and then, of course, uh, when uh, Moon Knight uh, rears his head eventually. Yeah, I mean, well, this whole sequence was was really cool. I mean, obviously, you know, that 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 part where if you know about um, Gaspar Uliel or however you pronounce his name, yeah. then, you know, it comes with a bit of um, melancholy when you see him on screen. But um, yeah. the sequence was really cool, the, the, the action sequence that followed. And, and the, when I was talking before about, um, about lines, you know, he had those two um, pyramids that looked like the Louvre uh, in which he kept the, the sarcophagus yeah. in, in one of them. And, and what it was inside there was kind of mirroring what was inside the Pyramid of Giza, which I, I just thought was really cool. There were, the, there were those gold masks in the background with, um, with a, a mask in front, uh, which, and in the, in the Giza Pyramid, there was the avatar and the statue of the God in front. So, um, and they surrounded the tomb in his, uh, let's call it the Louvre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mini Louvre. <laughs> yeah, and the lines on the um, glass work of that were again, you know, so chaotic, uh, again, like mirroring um, uh, or, or depicting his um, moonlight, Moon Knight's uh, fractured state of mind. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was it, it was good at the, the handheld camera as well, um, making those kind of lines move around and, and everything as as it was shifting. Um, mm -hmm. was really good at kind of depicting this, um, well, uh, uh, creating tension actually in the scene first and foremost, but also this kind of chaos. Yeah, I really like, uh, I mean, in general, I like the show's production design and look a lot. And I yeah. also, you know, it's, it's meant to evoke the Louvre. It's really cool how it does. Um, and also this sequence, you know, uh, they do a fun job here of the idea that, you know, while Steven is the buffoon, uh, he yeah. certainly has a skill set and like a knowledge well that Mark does not. Uh, again, it's, yeah. it's a, a, you know sort of a, an idea we've seen before, but I think done well of you know they 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 complement each other. You know that they can do things well. So there is even though Mark is guiding the ship uh, for most of this episode, mm -hmm. this is the part where it's like it's Stephen's time to shine. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll go for it. I was going to say about Layla as well here, which kind of is. Um, uh, going a bit off topic but she you know I do feel that there's more to find out about her more more to learn about her background whether she is um, gonna be a version of Layla Miller which I suggested and a lot of people are talking about um, <laughs> who is a mutant from the comics I don't know but she does that crane kick here and the way it's shot it looks kind of super heroic like there's some kind of I don't know whether it was just a cool visual um, or there was a suggestion of, of, of powers there. And the, the color purple is associated with her as well, which the MCU uses a lot to denote power. It's often used with, with villains or conflicted villains. But, um, yeah. but yes, I, I, it was associated with her strongly in the boat sequence. Um, and I, and I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm putting two and two together and coming up with five. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's funny because we also get with Layla, you know, Harrow showing up and kind of mentioning more about uh, the death of her father mm. and saying very, you know, uh, uh, cryptically, Mark isn't telling you the truth. Um, it is a TV show thing that I roll my eyes at, but accept that it's like uh, when that happens in a show, 
that you would think that uh, I, right right after that kind of all hell broke loose and there's a big fight scene. But the second they get away from Hera, you'd think even as they're going out to the desert, you'd think she'd be like, hey, so what's that deal with my dad? You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should tell me what he was talking about there. <laughs> but on TV, characters always are like, I'll wait for that. You know, I'll follow up later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like the sort of back and forth with Steven here and he gets to take control. And then, yeah, another really cool Moon Knight fight. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm yeah. going to ask Ryan to put in the uh, description of this episode, uh, uh, the article uh, of that uh, you got done about uh, capes and superheroes because one of the guys grabs Moon Knight's cape uh, here, Kim, and uh, that's, uh, that's a trouble spot, right? <laughs> I mean, it also uh, works in his, not that moment, but the cape works in his favor because obviously it's bulletproof and he shields Layla at one point with it too. So, you know, you, you, you take with one hand. Uh, <laughs> yes. you we Not see the, the, the pros and the cons of the cape, but you should check out this article uh, that, yeah, where Kim, uh, where, uh, where we dived into uh, uh, the, the, yeah, all the capes of it all, which is a very disgusting thing. Um, because look, also you mentioned uh, helps, you know, protect from bullets and also just looks cool because we get that great shot, very from the comics of it looking like a crescent uh, as he leaps down. Uh, but I also appreciate that that guy grabs it, which also happens. I, mean, I think we mentioned this recently in the Batman, one yes. of the bad guys grabs. So I think at least the people making these things in 2022 go, hey, cape looks great. But at some point we could have someone grab that cape. Yes, they yeah. Would. <laughs> yeah, it's like this idea you shouldn't, as a woman, have a ponytail because it's easy to grab. Right, right. <laughs> logic. <laughs> <laughs> but also it can look cool. So, you know, we go back and forth. <laughs> um, and then I definitely enjoyed uh, when uh, Stephen does take over and we get Mr. Knight and they uh, let's all chill the F out uh, of it all. I am cur- it is interesting that this show is kind of really going for it on the supernatural side as far as like, like he, he gets wounded in a way that would kill a normal man. Uh, mm-hmm. He is stabbed through a couple of times here. Uh, has he screaming, take the body uh, back to Mark to take over? Uh, so, uh, you know, it feels like they kind of leveled up uh, Moon Knight a bit here from how he sometimes is portrayed. Uh, but I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, glad he didn't die from the stab, the uh, the spears through his body. That would, right. that would make a short series. Would have been a twist, you know? <laughs> We took up here. Uh, it's a little. Uh, inc- uh, did you think? I, I thought. I mean, I thought it was purposely inconclusive whether Anton died or not, because uh, he could mm-hmm. come back in the remaining episodes. So it felt like a yeah. little. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I happens. mean, I assumed he didn't, um, but we'll see, won't we? We will see. But he, yeah, he, well, he took a um, a crescent uh, dart, didn't he, to some part of his body, and it seemed to knock him off his horse, or at least. Uh, I don't know, leave him swinging around its neck or something. <laughs> Crescent dart to the body is the new arrow to the knee. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we get this, uh, the closing sequence out in the desert. Uh, I uh, uh, Shares, if I could turn back time, was in my head. Uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> As they talked about uh, why, the, basically the idea that it's like, they're, they're using a star map of sorts. Uh, but that because the sky would be subtly different uh, after this long, uh, they need to change it to what it was long ago, which mm-hmm. Khan Shukidu, it is one of those funny things, you know, I, I get it. It's, it's, it's how sometimes you have to do these storytelling that earlier in the episode, the other gods are like, Khan you better not mess with the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, eh. <laughs> Man's, all right, God's got to do what a God's got to do, Eric. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but I thought this was a really cool visual. Uh, Kanchu and Mr. Knight uh, turning everything back. What'd you think of this sequence? Yeah, oh, really cool. Um, and again, there's there's purple in, I don't know why the MCU is obsessed with purple, but there you go. It seems to denote everything. Magic, it's the multiverse, it's uh, it's uh, Armit's magic, it's Kanchu's magic, it's um, danger, there's a villain around the next corner. But that's okay, you know, I'll, I'll just keep trying to decode it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, purple is my favorite color, uh, so appreciate it, MCU. <laughs> it's, 
it's better than red as a warning because we all know that one. So. <laughs> no, but it's, you're you're right because I did think of it earlier in the season because when Harrow is using his his cane mm. is a p- purple energy. And I was like, oh, wow, purple. It's funny because we've seen that obviously Thanos physically, but also has energy. Uh, purple is used a lot. So, hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. maybe phase four is going to aim towards the secret of the purple. You know, yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, <fine. laughs> maybe. Gr- Maybe Grimace will come into it. Ooh, I like it. There can be some new Happy Meals. It will all yeah. work together. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then uh, the end. Uh, yeah, you do. You do feel that the the other gods uh, they need to uh, wise up here because they're just all telling Harrow, "You were right." Uh, Harrow's, Harrow's got these gods wrapped around his finger. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is very manipulative, you know, and that's that's cult leaders are, and that's what he essentially is, isn't he? He's got all these uh, disciples buying into his um, rhetoric, and also I'm sure he leads a little bit by fear because he's shown them a little bit of that power that he wields uh, from Armit. So, uh, yeah, I also I did like that. It was funny when he said because uh, he says, uh, "Can he can." he hear what we're what we're saying <laughs> and they're like yeah i'm just like and you're like because i want to say some really threatening stuff or like yeah, uh, really uh really just uh twist the knife on this guy <laughs> so give us some time here uh but no that was that was interesting because he gets uh his one-on-one time with conchu here uh mm-hmm. little little conchu in his little <laughs> okay. yeah little baby conchu and he tells him how much he enjoys the pain causing pain yeah. Which is, yeah. But he yeah. says that he calls it the greatest sin. Like he's, yeah, he says that he enjoyed feeling out pain has, uh, when he was Moon Knight, but that, yeah, he, he carries that as a, as a sin. Uh, mm-hmm. but I did think that was a, a good moment. Uh, but you know, I, I you know, because we're here at the end of the episode, but one thing I did want to sort of wheel, go back on a little bit, uh, that you brought up is, yeah, the idea of this other personality mm-hmm. because, someone we're getting you know because this episode gets to switch things up and we're following mark and we're having mark's blackout periods but as it turns out it's not steven taking over because we look you know look mark will kill in the heat of battle but he's not like a malicious you know crazed murderer and that there's this other personality that is more brutal and seems to be uh inflicting like pain and damage on a level that mark wouldn't do and steven we know wouldn't do Mm. um in the comics, of course, there is the Jake Lockley personality again, who is, uh, I think he's a cab driver there. It's a very specific thing. Uh, do you think, Kim, this will be their version of Jake or can there just be something else altogether uh, lurking there? Yeah, no, I think that's what it's uh, leaning towards. They do do the cheeky nod to the taxi in this episode, don't yes. they? When when he comes around from his rooftop blackout, he's in a cab, not driving it, but um uh, he that personality had told the cab driver he wanted to go to the airport. So um, that's interesting. I don't know where he was going back to <laughs> back to London. I don't know where Jake Lockley might think he lives. Who knows? Right, right. Good, good but, point on that. Uh, I hadn't even thought about that. Of you know, he uh, that we the unseen personality was got in a taxi. I think you're right. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and and yeah, when we know that this this version is a more violent personality, so it, it points towards Lockley or a version of. But I I, I googled his um, image because I don't know him from the comics, Jake mm-hmm. Lockley, and uh, he has a moustache, or he did in the fo- in the pictures that I saw. So I I hope that. Uh, Oscar Isaac grows a mustache for that personality. I was going to say, what if it's like some of the stash? <laughs> some of the stash. <laughs> um, I think bet, I might have. What'd you say? Still, I was going to say, have a stick on one. That's even better. Yeah. That's even better. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> he keeps taking it off and it on. Uh, I think I might have mentioned this on a previous episode, but yeah, when I did interviews for the show, one of the producers, I forget which, when I specifically asked about Jake Lockley, gave me one of those coy, you know, we'll see. You know, it's like they're they're well aware. It, he's he's conspicuous by his absence because it's always been Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, and Jake Lockley. Uh, to not have either by the very end of the season, it be like a reveal or something. But it, yeah, it feels likely that that is the name of this uh, the unseen mm-hmm. brutal uh, guy here. 
Um, Kim, any other uh, thoughts on this episode before we wrap up? Uh, no, not really. No. Oh, well, there was one awkward bit. There was one awkward bit I wanted to point out that when when um, Yatsil, the avatar for the uh, god of love and music, tells um, Mark to investigate the black market as a place to start for looking for the sarcophagus he's after, he, he literally goes to the market and ask some guy selling juice, <laughs> I'm looking for this sarcophagus, do you know anything? Um, which which was just really, why would you do that? I'm gonna start at the market. She's told me <laughs> the market. This place has there. everything. <laughs> this juice seller, he must know. And then he looks shifty and walks, backs off and then um, Layla turns up, which is interesting, just when he needs her. <laughs> just when he needs her, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, we. I, I know exactly where that is. It's right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, uh, I definitely enjoyed this idea. This was a, a very busy episode, I think, in a lot of a lot of fun ways. Uh, but thank you, Kim, for uh, joining me once again to talk Moon Knight. Uh, Pleasure. And guys, we'll be back next week. I, uh, presumably, we'll be back on our same uh, moon time, uh, same moon channel here uh, uh, with with your uh, questions and comments. So be here for that. Be here, there, here for plenty more fandom. Thanks a lot. Take care.